Uh, well, good evening, everyone, once again. Uh, we'll continue straight away with the head coach and vice captain of the winning team this evening, Scotland. On the top table, we have Gregor Townsend and Phil Russell, of course. Uh, once again, uh, if I could ask you please to wait for the microphone and also give your name and the name of your media when you're invited to ask a question. Uh, we're going to ask questions for Finn first this evening, if possible. Um, so if you do have a question for Finn Russell, captain, we'll go out always start here in the front row. Hi, Finn. Um, happy, happy-ish. What's your mindset after that? <clears throat> um, I'm quite happy with the result. Um, we got the bonus point that we needed. Um, to keep us alive in this competition, but there's a lot of missed chances out there, and we're going to have to be a lot better um, in the next two games um, if we're going to um, if we want to keep going in this tournament. So, you know, it's it was good to, to get the bonus point before half, or to get the bonus point before half time, but there's a lot of work ons there. So, um, we're happy, but I think when we when we watch it back next week, we'll be a bit frustrated with the chances that we left out there. You were subjected to a, a cheap shot, second half. A yellow, amazingly upgraded to a red card. Um, what was your thoughts on that? Did you know anything about it? Uh, no, nah, that's not my job to look at uh, if that's a red card or a yellow card. Um, I think I'll just part of that mall, so and not often I find myself in there. But um, you know, that's not for me to look at and to decide what what card it is. So I'll leave that to the officials. And you know, we're not we're not going to play Tonga again this tournament, so there's not nothing to worry about for us there. Sorry, can I just ask you to wait for the microphone? Seven different try scorers found that it feel as though you were starting to find that wee bit of fluency in the attack. Yeah, I think you know seven different try scorers is great, but I think we left four, five, six chances out there potentially. Um, but it's great, you know, we're getting the ball to the wide. The wide Dasha scored a good try in the end. Duan scored, so the back scored a few tries. We've got a driving mall try, which was really pleasing as well. Um, but like I said, when we get to that, the sort of finish zone five metres from the line, we need to be a lot better there. So. Um, it's good that boys are scoring, but I think we need to be a lot better and we need to be harder on ourselves um, in training and then in games. So uh, I think, like I said, if we want to progress in this tournament, we need to be a lot better than that. It doesn't matter if there's one guy that scores seven tries or seven individuals, it's, it's a team effort. So <clears throat> as I mentioned before earlier, it's, it's happy that we got the bonus point, but we need to be better. And a bit. There'll be frustration next week and we'll need to up it. More questions for Finn Russell? Here. Hi, Finn. Obviously, the Ireland South Africa game slightly changed the dynamic of the group last night. How did that influence your thinking? <laughs> Is there any deflation last night, and does it change things in the grand scheme for you guys? Look, I think you know, ideally for us, it would have been South Africa that won, but we know what we need to do now. Um, the game being last night, that meant that we knew today and, and going into this Romania game what we need to get from these two games. Um, to have that final games, game against Ireland in Paris. So um, I don't think it changes too much for us. Um, after losing to South Africa, it was always going to have to be that we go to, to Paris and beat Ireland. So that's just, you know, we, we knew this was going to be a situation at the start, potentially. Um, so it was good that we knew, obviously, before before today what we had to get and we managed to get that bonus point win. But I think it was always, after that first game, it was always going to be the case. We're going to have to go to Paris and, and beat Ireland. Thank you. Luke McLaughlin from The Guardian. Hi, Finn. Um, what was the physicality like? I mean, uh, Sione spoke about it before the game, but what, how, how was that uh, the, from the physical point of view? Oh, it's always going to be tough against Tonga, you know. Um, they're big boys. They want to put good shots in. Um, thankfully, they didn't put as much pressure as I thought they were going to put on me. Um, so it allowed me a little bit of time on the ball, which was nice. Um, but it's always going to be a really physical game. I think more so for the forwards. And Sione at 12 is going to carry the ball a little bit more. Uh, I think we played... You know, we played well, we moved the ball around a lot, which makes it hard to get these spot tackles. Um, but as I said, it's always been a physical game, more so for the forwards and the centres um, than it is for me. But um, I think the boys rode the tackles well, and in defence, we were pretty good. Do we have more questions in the room for Finn this evening? 
Hi, Finn, David Barnes, the offside line. Um, you know, you mentioned that you got a bit more space um, than you maybe got in South Africa. Did, did you need that after the South Africa experience, or are you kind of shrugged that off already? Just uh, to get yourself back into the way of things. Yeah, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say we needed it. I think yeah, the South Africa game, it's, it's always, always tough against them. They're so physical, their set piece is so strong, and their defence is slightly different to most teams. Um, you know, I think the week after South Africa, it was very frustrating because, again, we left some chances out there and we could have been, well, we should have been better that game. Um, but I think we're all waiting for this game to get back into it. Having a two-week break during a competition is quite long. So um, I think boys were, were really pleased and happy to get out there today. Um, I think we, the first 20, 30 minutes, we were really good today. And then we sort of started chasing tries, I think. So um, I wouldn't say it's something that we needed to have space in the ball, but different teams will have different defences and, and show you different pictures. So it's just being able to adapt and, and play against different teams. So um, again, it's a good thing that we managed to get a bonus point today, but there's a lot of work on us. Final questions for Finn, or doesn't seem to be the case, so I think we can let you go. Not in French. Thank you. Not in French. Thank you very much. Uh, and we'll now move to questions for head coach Gregor Townsend. We'll start with Luke in the front row. <coughs> Thank you. Um, Gregor, there were times when you were under a bit of pressure, quite a bit of pressure today, and you fell behind on the scoreboard. Were you pleased that the game plan was stuck to and the composure was kept? Yes, we, we knew it would be a tough match. Uh, for Tonga are a very good side, got very good individuals, and they're very physical. And we, we talked about the work that we did in the first 20 minutes might not necessarily lead to points on the board, but it's going to... We can take away their belief, we can take away their um, their fitness by that tw first 20 minutes. So it was actually a bonus that we got those four tries, um, literally a bonus, but uh, the fact that we got the four tries in the first half was probably ahead of what we expected, uh, and credit to the players for doing that. I think in the Ireland game, it was three all after 20 minutes, and when Tonga played Ireland, so it showed you uh, what what Tonga are as a team, and they, they took their, their opportunity well today is, um, with their try. Gregor, how is Jamie Ritchie, and have you had any explanation as to why there was no red card for that incident? No, I don't, I don't know if we'd get explanation, but I think what they said on the... When I saw I heard the referee explaining that there was mitigation in terms of height, and when he explained why it stayed as a yellow, uh, Jamie has obviously failed his um, HIE 1 um, or HIE 2, correct me on the, the terminology, and uh, wasn't able to return to the field. So very disappointing that our captain, one of our key players, was hit in the head uh, and had to be removed from the game. It's twice now that it's happened with South Africa. Um, number eight got hit in the head. Jack Dempsey, nothing happened that day. Uh, and today, only a yellow card. I just don't understand what what the TMO bunker and the, and the three officials who are and the TMO who are there to say whether it's a red card or not are looking at. Um, I think we're trying to get a look at ways to not give red cards rather than referee what is an illegal tackle and should be a red card, in my opinion. We'd always have had conversations with World Rugby after the, the Jack Dempsey incident, or will there be more after this? And is there any point in those, in your, in your view? <sighs> who knows? Who knows? Um, the decision gets made. I, I would like to say that um, the TMO bunker is not. Uh, it's not. It's not um, being delivered as what I thought it would be, which is. Only if the referee at the time um, isn't sure whether it's a yellow card or red card. I don't believe there's been a red card issued by a referee yet. They've all gone to the to the bunker, um, and well, I suppose it's to, to help the referees when uh, when their referees are not sure whether it's a yellow or red card. But it's it's taken the game away from the referees to make those decisions, uh, and if there's mitigation there for a player who runs into contact and gets hit in the head. I don't see it. Um, it's supposed to be a late or sudden change of movement. Just 
Jamie didn't even carry the ball that low and gets hit in the head. And this is our showcase, this is our opportunity to, to show what is legal and what is illegal, and what we want out of the game. And that's two tackles now that both upright, both hit, both hit the head of our players. One had no sanction, not even a penalty, and the second one just had a yellow card. And I don't think that's good enough. Gregor, do you think there could have been more cards issued for similar offences out there? And second part of this is, is there enough or any transparency around the explanation for why these decisions are made in the bunker? The second one's a big question more for, for you guys to ask. Uh, I don't know the answer to the second one. And the first one, no, I'd, I'd, I'd love to look at more detail. It was a very physical game. Uh, and what I thought most of the majority um, were really good tackles from both sides. I felt our players showed huge physicality today. Um, the contact work, the ball carrying, uh, and at times the defence. Uh, we do defend in a different way. A lot of it is about riding the tackle and making sure that ball is slowed down. Uh, and I thought we did that very well. It was, a very, it was an excellent physical contest, but the, well, we can only talk about the tackle that led to our, our captain being removed from the field and not being able to return. Hi, Gregor. Um, Brendan O'Brien, the Irish examiner. Just the game last night, um, Finn obviously spoke a little bit about it. How does that change or does it change what you guys need to do over the next couple of weeks? result? Uh, well, uh, reading um, a few comments after the game, it looked like Ireland are already in the quarterfinals, so um, even people chatting today saying Ireland are playing New Zealand, so for us, well, maybe um, that's already been decided. And we, we know we have to win our, our next two games. Um, likely now we'll have to, to win with either a bonus point or deny Ireland getting a bonus point, but we've got a game next week to, to focus on and we're going to get maximum points from that one first. We'll go here and, and then here, please. We'll start in the front row. Sorry. Hey, Gregor. Uh, David Barnes, still signaling. Um, <laughs> can you just clarify the... Jamie's tier one or tier two. What, what were we looking at with Jamie? Is it a 12 day? It, it will be. It will be, I'd imagine, because he's had previous um, head injuries. So once you, I think the threshold is five in your career, and I believe he's over that. So 12 days still makes him available for our final game, but it takes him out of our next game, which is, is obviously very disappointing for him and us. I mean, he's a kind of um, regular member of the squad, captain of the squad. How much of a concern, you know, how much would that count against him in terms of not being able to train next week? With Ireland, keep in mind. Oh, I think he'll be able to to return at his his level um, if he gets through all the the return to play protocols. But no, I've no I've no worries about him um, coming back with a two week break before that game, uh, today's game. So if he gets back in the two weeks, then I'm sure he'll be back at his best level. Uh, bonjour, uh, Gregor. Une, une question en français. Il uh, y a cet essai aujourd'hui, mais mais il y a aussi uh, pas mal d'en avant. Est-ce que c'est quelque chose qui vous inquiète Il y a eu, comme le disait Finn aussi, des, euh, des moments où vous pouviez faire mieux à 5 mètres de la ligne, etc. Est-ce que ça vous inquiète dans l'optique du match à venir contre l'Irlande C'est passé aujourd'hui, ce sera peut-être euh, une sanction qui tombera à l'arrivée et une défaite si vous faites ça aussi contre, contre l'Irlande. Est-ce que ça vous inquiète Non, pas, pas pour l'Irlande. Si on marque cet essai contre l'Irlande, euh, je serai très, très content. Aujourd'hui, on, on était un peu trop gourmand. Euh, surtout dans les, les 10, 10, 15 dernières minutes, euh, de marquer un, un essai trop vite. Euh, mais avant ça, de marquer quatre essais en première mi-temps, de jouer avec l'intensité, le, le, le ballon euh, très vite, euh, ça, c'est euh, des choses euh, très positives. Mais on sait, la semaine prochaine, contre Romani, Romani, si on a les mêmes occasions de marquer, il faut qu'on ait plus... Clinical. C'est quoi le mot en français? Clinical. Clinique. Plus clinique. I got every word apart from the last one. <laughs> uh, 
Hi, Gregor. We've just heard about Stuart McAnally leaving the squad. Obviously, a pretty horrible way for his career to end. How is he? Uh, right now, he's very emotional because um, he got a presentation in the, in the change rooms from the players uh, and Grant Gilchrist um, gave a fantastic speech um, and Stuart uh, responded. So it was, a, it was a very emotional time for all of us, um, especially Stuart. To get the news yesterday that um, he wasn't going to recover in time from a, from a neck injury picked up at training um, is so disappointing for, for him. I think we all thought this would be just a great way to end his career, coming out, getting his 50th cap, contributing to our, our World Cup campaign. Something that he's deserved and earned, given what he's put into that jersey over the years. And also what he's put in over the last three months. Like He trained so well. Um, he worked hard for this opportunity and this just bad luck. Um, it wasn't even injury during the session. It was more at the end of the session. He'd, he'd felt um, pain in his neck and it, had, it didn't recover for two days. And then yesterday we decided, OK, let's scan and see um, if there is an, a, a bigger issue there, which, which there is, which means he'll be, he'll be ruled, he was ruled out for the rest of the tournament. Yes. Time for one final question, if there are any. I think about the game. You guys have just asked me questions not about the game, and I know it's partly my fault for answering about um, other incidents. Hi there, Gregor. Uh, Pacific Media Network. Um, just want to ask about uh, anything that you've seen from the Tongan side tonight in the game. Um, yeah, good. <laughs> that uh, you can see uh, going forward into playing against Ireland with the physicality. Yeah, I think um, Tonga really tested us in the, in the areas where there's contact. So the the rucks are they're a very good jackling side. Uh, they ended up getting a few against us more in the, in the second half. I think they had six against Ireland. So they have a huge presence there. They're very quick uh, and at winning the ball, and um, they're hard to move. The the scrum was a real competitive area. I thought we, we did very well there and started to dominate. I was very surprised with the last scrum penalty, but um, it's not really my area. But so was my scrum coach, surprised with that. And I thought their ball carrying um, was really good. Forwards with real skill, backline players, aggressive. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a very good test for us. I think we'll, we will... As Finn alluded to, um, we'll be disappointed with how we didn't score two or three more tries, but that was a proper physical test match against a very good side um, who threw everything at us. And we managed to, to create lots of opportunities today, which is the first step. The second step, step would have been converting more of them, but uh, it was a really good preparation for us for the next two games that are coming up quite quickly now. Okay, that will be the final question this evening. I'd like to thank you, Gregor. Thank you. Scotland team. Thank you. Ah, it's because I've got a huddle you're going to ask me about the game now. Is that why?